Evaluating a classifying model should not be an issue anymore, as you learned about the confusion metrics, related metrics, and also the ROC. But does this also apply if you want to perform regression? Well, not really. For the regression setting, we need to look at a different set of evaluation metrics. Once again, however, it is important to know that I will only talk about some basic metrics that are helpful in most of the regression tasks. As always, there are plenty of different metrics available, some more advanced than others, which we'll not cover in this course. Okay, so let's get started. As you might remember from your math course in our brief overview, regression aims at finding the perfect function to describe your dataset. We will use one-dimensional data as example for this video as it makes visualization a lot easier, but the metrics can be applied to data of higher dimensionality as well. So let's draw a simple grid to begin with. As we are in the supervised learning setting again, each data point will come with its own label. However, the labels are not discrete anymore, as it was with the case with classification, now they are continuous. Let's look at a very simple case of age and income, where age is our input data and income is the corresponding label. First, we will draw our data points into our grid. Next will be the function that your model has learned from the training data. As you can see, in some of the cases, the function fails to predict the exact correct value. We will consider our predicted value to lie on the projected function, and our true value is the actual label of the data point. Intuitively, we could now just measure the sum of errors between the true values and the predicted values. But considering that our errors can both be positive and negative, this might not be the best option. The first and simplest metric we will look at is the mean absolute error. As the name already suggests, instead of taking the errors as they are, we will compute the absolute values of them, and then calculate the mean. In mathematical notation, this metric would look like this, where n is the number of data points in our dataset, y is the true label, and y hat the predicted value. The idea behind our training is then to minimize this metric and get it as close to zero as possible. The mean absolute error is also rather robust to outliers. Another possibility is to instead of taking the absolute error, we now take the square of the error. This will also eliminate any potential negative errors. The formula changes just slightly. We get rid of the absolute value and just square the difference, which will give more weight to large errors as well. This metric is called mean squared error. Now this might not be as robust as using the absolute error, but it comes with some computational advantages that I will not cover in this video. However, the output of this function is now a squared unit of your input. To mitigate this, we can simply calculate the root of the error, which we will then call root mean squared error. And once again, our formula changes just very slightly by adding the root operator to the mean squared error. All of the discussed metrics so far are rather straightforward and directly calculate the error of your model. Similar to the idea in the ROC, where we can compare the model performance with the baseline model, we can use a metric called R squared for the regression setting. R squared is sometimes also called goodness of fit and commonly provides us with a metric between 0 and 1 that tells us how much better our model performs than a simple baseline. For the baseline, R squared uses the mean line of our data points and compares this with the predicted function of the model. The mathematical formula looks like this. We need to compute the sum of squared errors and divide it by the total sum of squares, and the result of this will be subtracted from 1. The sum of squared errors, similar to before, is once again the difference between true value and predicted value, squared and summed over all the instances. The total sum of squares does the same, but instead of using the predicted value, we will use the mean value of our dataset. The result, as mentioned, will be somewhere between 0 and 1. You will get zero if your model performs as good, or bad in that case, as the baseline model. The theoretical one happens if your model makes no mistakes in the regression, but this is an unlikely case for most datasets. As with the classification setting, is it also a good idea to look at multiple metrics to get a better understanding of how well your model works. 